What's going on folks? We're back here in Stu's garage and uh, today we're finally, finally, finally going to be able to put the steering angle kit on the Mustang and make it uh, a car that, from a car that drifts to an official drift car. A few shout outs before we get going. I want to make a shout out to Steve Mass. These are the Steve Mass control arms and uh, steering angle kit that we're going to be putting on the car. Steve Mass has been an incredible help uh, throughout this build. Uh, great customer service. Um, I bought this kit back in October and I've got a feeling I'll probably be giving him a call before the this video is even finished uh, in case I run into any issues. So thanks Steve Matz for your help. Um, John Duncan. I did not buy John Duncan spindles but by the time I got my hands on these I wish that I had. So if you want to do a steering angle kit buy John Duncan spindles. Um, also a shout out to FMC Drift on Facebook. All the Mustang Drifters are on that page and they're happy to help out. Um, I think that's about it so let's take a look at what we're going to be doing today. So three major installs are going to be happening here today. Uh, the first install is going to be the true five lug conversion with uh, the SN95 spindles, PBR brakes, so that's going to be a big brake upgrade, upgrade for the Fox body. Um, so that's one install. I'm not really going to go into detail for that because anything that you need to know about PBR brake upgrades or SN95 conversion, five lug conversion, there's a really great video for that on late model restoration and I'll post a link for that there. Uh, the next upgrade, of course, is going to be the steering angle and bump steer kit. Uh, there's a couple of pieces there, some more pieces in that bag there, springs that I'm going to be upgrading. Um, and the last piece is larger fender flares because the steering angle kit is going to push the control arms out another two inches on each side in the front. Um, again, I'm not going to get super detailed on the steering angle kit because Matt Sapa has a great video on his page. I'll also leave you an, a link for that. Um, I'm going to do a couple of things a little bit differently than he does and other pages that you've seen, and I'll show you that uh, during the process. So let's go ahead and get the Mustang off the ground and get started. All right, so what we got over here is we got our wheel off. We already took the front spacer off. And we're gonna go ahead and rip out this fender liner. That's gotta go bye-bye. Uh, and we're basically just gonna break down the entire front end. Uh, we gotta take the brakes off first. Uh, then the hubs will come right off. And uh, so this is what I was talking about when I said the, the five lug conversion. These are just conversion hubs if you hadn't seen my previous video. These are the ones from LMR or American Muscle. You just basically you stick that on in place of the old rotor and you have a five lug. Uh, this is going to come off and then we have to trim the actual subframe back here and then there's some more cutting that we got to do so here we go. Alright check this out. There is a nest in here behind the fender well. This is disgusting. This is what happens when you work on an old car. And of course famous rust of the rust bucket so someday I'll be fixing that all right we've got the driver's side almost all the way broken down now uh, most of this stuff is gonna come out with the Steve mask kit I'm taking off the outer tie rod in because that's gonna be replaced with the bump steer kit um, you need to buy the Steve mask bump steer kit because it's extended All right, what I'm doing here is I'm hitting everything underneath with undercoat because this is gonna get exposed to a lot more weather and elements now that I'm not running the uh, fender liners. For now at least, I may decide to put them back on if they're not gonna cause any issues, but I just want this area to be nice and covered because it's definitely gonna get hit by mud and water and rocks and other garbage from the road. All right, I didn't show too much of breaking down the other side just because I'm um, doing it for the first time and just trying to work quickly. But anyways, I'm gonna show a little bit more of what's going on on this side. Um, so you don't really have to do this in any particular order. 
I would definitely make sure that you break the tie rods free first because it's a lot harder to do when they're not connected to anything. Um, as you can see, this one is already loose and these things don't seize that tight. So once you undo the lock nut, um, this will come off easily. Um, the next thing, you're probably gonna wanna order new tie rod uh, end links because I snapped the other one in half on the other side. So uh, at this point, I don't really even care if I break this one, I just need to get it off because I have to order new ones anyway at this point. All right, next up, we're gonna go ahead and get the spindles off. Since we're not using them again, I'm just gonna bend this dust guard out the way. And um, this is gonna be a 24 millimeter socket. And I'm just using the uh, adjustable wrench on the other side just to hold that thing in place because otherwise it'll spin all day and it won't get anywhere. All right, next up we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the tie rod. Uh, we're gonna use the impact tool for that. Uh, don't even waste your time screwing with the spindle because the arm and spindle have to come off and that's kind of difficult to get off. All right, to remove these uh, tie rod ends, you're supposed to hit the thing on the side, but since I'm not putting these back out on, uh, I'm just gonna smack it at the top. And that's out of there. <laughs> All right, next up, we're gonna go ahead and drop the strut out. It's only one nut holding the strut in, but there's like uh, three more nuts holding the camber kit in, and we'll grab that next. All right, here's what the bottom of a camber kit looks like. And uh, they say that you have to modify this piece and basically invert it uh, in order for it to fit here and make clearance the way it's supposed to. But John Duncan says that you can use it this way, so we'll see what happens when we try to just leave it stock. All right, these control arms are the hardest nuts to bust, so uh, good luck with that. Hope you have your cheetah bar ready. All right, it was a difficult fight getting these uh, this front control arm out, but now both sides are done, completely stripped down. And um, at this point, most folks would disconnect the brake lines, but I'm gonna leave mine connected for the moment because a lot of cutting is about to happen, and I just don't want dust and trash to possibly go inside the brake line. So I'm just gonna leave that connected until I'm ready to actually connect up the new lines. So um, let's go ahead and do some cutting. Uh, the first thing we're going to cut is uh, we're going to actually make some relief in between here um, where this uh, subframe is. Uh, this part is actually beefed up to support the spring which would normally go here. There's no spring here so it's not really going to hurt us to take away from this. So um, we're just going to go ahead and cut a chunk out from right here. So here's the trimmed and recessed uh, front subframe, and this should give me clearance for more steering angle. Next thing we're gonna trim is this little shelf here, and that's gonna give um, space for the strut to travel once it's pushed out further, and allow you to have camber back for the wheels. And so what I'm gonna do is probably make a cut here, a cut here, and cut all the way across. All right, so as you can see, I've cut this area out. And next what I'm gonna try and do is bend this thing down and then hammer it back up so that it's out of the way. And as always, there's trash and animal residue in here. I don't know how many nests I've found in this car so far, but I keep finding them. All right, and the last bit of cutting that we're gonna need to do is up here in the shock tower. 
Uh, we need to push this back so that, like I said, you can get the extra um, positive camber that you're going to need. Otherwise, it's just going to be super negative and you'll never get any kind of a decent alignment. So, um, I just kind of sketched it out. I don't have the actual template, but that's what the hole is supposed to look like in the end. Uh, we'll see with my cutting skills how close I can actually get to that. Alright, so it's clearanced. It doesn't look exactly like the picture, but it's pretty close. Um, so this side is all cut up and pretty much ready um, with the exception of the brake line. Unfortunately, I nicked my brake line uh, doing the cutting, so now I gotta figure out how to replace that. Uh, now, Steve Mass recommends a 500 pound spring for somebody with a sway bar setup. I'm keeping my sway bar, so I'm doing a 500 pound e box spring. Um, if you are deleting your sway bar, which a lot of people do, they recommend like a 700 pound setup or more. Alright folks, it's 2 a.m. Um, I don't know why I thought this would be a quick and simple, or relatively quick and simple install. Uh, I'm pretty much beat. The car's prepped and ready. Everything's cut. Uh, all I have to do is just put parts back on. Uh, the only other thing is that I messed up that brake line and I'm going to have to repair that tomorrow. Um, but besides that, this is about 50% done. and. Um, in a few seconds, you'll see me get back at it, and it'll be a new day for me. All right, folks, we're back. Check it out. We've got one side, like, 90% put together. Um, it took me, like, a day of trying to uh, mix and match different combinations and a call to Steve Mass himself to get this thing totally figured out. It's a little bit confusing, but I've got it down, and it's not that difficult. You just need to know where pieces go. So I'll actually go into depth on how this is all assembled on the other side which I haven't started on yet. Alright so the first thing we're doing over here on the, we're on the driver's side and the driver's side is the only thing that has this so you're gonna take your new brake line which is an SN95 brake line I went ahead and got the upgraded uh, steel braided line from StopTech and you're also gonna need this little brake line adapter here I don't know what it's called I think they just call it a brake line adapter um, you get these things off of late model restoration you only need one it only goes on the driver's side um, and I've attached it using this Permatex liquid Teflon uh, just to help keep it from leaking so I screwed it in tight to the brake line first I also put a little bit of that thread sealer onto the actual hard line in the car and the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, add the clip back onto this bracket because this bracket is loose and then I'm going to reattach this line up into the socket where it goes. Huh? Should I move? No, I'm, I'm attaching it. The next thing we're going to look at doing is assembling your control arm. So, um, the first piece is they don't normally come with the ball joints in them. Uh, these are Fox Body style ball joints and I'll explain what that means later. What you're going to have to get your ball joint pressed in first of all. Second of all, you're going to have to install these heim joints, uh, which is what's going to connect to your subframe. So now the arm is assembled; it's ready to go in. Next thing you're going to look at is um, in your kit. If you buy the bump steer kit and the control arm kit, you're going to get three different size bolts. Um, don't mind that I've already put the spacers on here. I just did this because I already had to figure it out on the other side. But you've got three different size bolts. There's a long one, a medium, and a short one. Take out the shortest bolt. And as you can see here, I have the small spacer and a large spacer. The shortest bolt and these two spacers are gonna go to your tie rod end. This is for your bump steer. So set that off to the side. The next thing you're gonna do is you're going to take the medium size spacer or the next smallest spacer you're going to have one on each side so one of these goes to the front of the subframe and one of these goes to the back of the subframe basically the uh, the shorter one
goes to the front of the subframe. The longer one goes to the rear of the subframe. And you can configure your spacers to set your arm forwards or rearwards. All right, so here's the front of my subframe. Um, the shortest of the two bolts is going to go in the front of the subframe. So we're gonna feed it in this way. It doesn't actually matter what direction you go in. And the configuration that I'm choosing to do is to set my arms more rearward. Um, the more forward you set your arm, the more caster that's going to allow you to have and the more uh, race car worthy I would call it. Um, the only problem with that is the more forward you set your wheels, the more fitment issues you're going to have later and I'll actually show you that later. However, the advantage of having more caster is that your car will self steer better. So if you ever watched the video of Ryan Turek when he actually got his car to Manji with no hands. That's because he's got a ton of caster on a drift setup. But I'm going for less caster because I just need my wheels to fit better. So the first thing I'm going to do is throw in the bolt. I'm going to hang a washer on it. And I'm going to grab my short um, spacer. Your spacer may look different than mine because Steve Mass is always improving his kit and updating it. So your spacers may end up looking different. So I'm going to throw in a short spacer. I'm going to throw the arm in here like so and um, at this time I'm actually going to go ahead and put this bolt in on the other side just to support it, help myself a little bit temporarily and pull this bolt back like so. I'm going to put the larger spacer in. And as you can see I've got a gap here at the end. Uh, the other side used three shims, so I'm going to put three shims in there, and that should get me in there. Yep, three shims. Perfect fit. So now I just have to feed those through. So the first wheel is on, and as you can see, with the wheel sitting forward uh, and outwards more, I'm definitely going to have problems here. If you guys hate when I chop up this car, you might want to turn away now. I really don't want to do this, but I have to.